and welcome to Be Stock Studio. The gene therapy company Combigene just released their year-end report, and I am joined by CEO Jan Nilsson, who will tell us more about that. Welcome, Jan. Thank you so much. So let's start with the report. How would you like to comment on it? I would like to highlight two things. First, it's very rewarding to see the results of our in-licensing pro uh, process last year in the recently announced cooperation agreement with Sinero, a Danish company, regarding a very interesting pain program. And secondly, as can be seen from the report, we are in a very sound financial position, which is very important these days. And I think we should get back to the pain project, but before mm. that, maybe you could give us a short update on your epilepsy and lipodystrophy project. Certainly. In CDO1, our epilepsy project, I'm very pleased with a decision by Spark Therapeutics to enlarge the preclinical program into a cohesive plan uh, to go into the clinical trial submission, primarily in the US, with a focus on the US, that is. Um, that is very important from a point of view that the US is the biggest uh, pharmaceutical market in the world. The extended program actually means that we will reach a clinic somewhat later. When it comes to CDT2, our plan for 2022 was to bring the pro uh, program forward to a point where we can initiate a preclinical proof of concept study. Uh, we, some of the studies we did last year gave us inconclusive results. So therefore we have decided that we need to, to do another set of studies before we can enter into the preclinical proof of concept study. I see. And if we circle back to the pain program that you mentioned, could you tell us a bit about that? Absolutely. It's a very exciting program. It's actually, as I said, it's a program because it consists of two different projects. COSI-01, which is a peptide, uh, and COSI-02, which is an AAV-based gene therapy. But before I deep dive into the program, uh, let's see about a few facts about pain. Uh, pain is a very common illness. It's actually an illness in itself these days. One estimates that between 15 and 25 percent of the adult population in the US and Europe actually suffers from pain. And 7 percent suffers from chronic pain. And in the US and Europe that corresponds to 60 million people. A huge number. Um, current treatment is based on drugs like anti-inflammatory drugs, anti-epileptic drugs, uh, and opioids primarily. These come with some issues. They are not specifically designed to treat pain. Uh, so they have some disability, disabilitating uh, side effects like uh, anxiety, depression, uh, fatigue, uh, impaired mental and physical ability and addiction. And addiction is a huge problem on the other side of the Atlantic. They talk about the the runaway addiction. Over the last 20 years, 700,000 people have died in the US due to opioid abuse. And to put that number into perspective, in the Vietnam War, 60,000 Americans died. So we talk about 12 times that number. Uh, but on top of the human suffering, it also comes with a huge cost for society. Again, in the US, one estimates that the annual burden is between 560 and 635 billion US on an annual base. In Europe, we measure it somewhat differently. We say that it corresponds to between 3 and 10 percent of the gross domestic product. Again, staggering numbers. And in Sweden, we have an old report. Actually, it's 20 years old. But then it was stated that pain cost the Swedish society, 87.5 billion Swedish crowns. And interestingly, only less than 10% of that was healthcare related cost. The absolute majority is indirect cost, like loss of productivity, early retirement, sick leave, and so on. So what we are looking to develop here is a, is a pain program that doesn't come with all these side effects. And as I said, we are developing a program, now two separate entities, two projects, COSI-01, a peptide, and COSI-02. The peptide, is they are similar in a way, but still different. And what I mean by that is that the peptide is going to be used 
as we plan for temporary pain. It can be administered to patients on one or several occasions during a pain period. On the contrast is the, the uh, AAV, the, the, the gene therapy product. And that is aimed for patients who, who face the prospect of a lifelong suffering from chronic pain. And that is most likely uh, pain in the, in the nervous system caused by illness or um, um, injuries, I would say. Examples is, uh, is uh, phantom limb um, uh, problems and problems caused by uh, the nervous system when it comes to back issues. So uh, what we are doing then is developing this program. And as I said, they were similar, those two projects. And what I mean by that is they actually utilize exactly the same mechanism of action. With the peptide, we actually give the patient the, the pain-relieving substance itself. With the AAV, we actually instruct the body to produce that peptide, so to speak. So the, the, the body will uh, produce the pain-relieving substance itself. By doing so, uh, we believe that we can circumvent and add uh, beneficial features of our treatment compared to today's treatment. When it comes to addiction, for example, I mentioned that. We have seen no signs of addiction in our uh, preclinical models, and some of those models have been going on for a year, actually. And we can also avoid having to take a pill once, twice, three times a day for the rest of your life. With the COSI-02, the AAV, we can op potentially offer patients a lifelong uh, relief of pain with just one or a few administrations. I see, and this is a really big problem that you are describing. Mm -hmm. So I'm wondering how big is this project and how will it affect your organization? During last year, we, we put a lot of efforts into finding a new project, uh, as, and we have done. But we have also made sure that we were ready to take on a new project. So during last year, we actually uh, recruited uh, Alba Grönberg. And over the years, we have added you know, expertise in, in, in uh, in gene therapy area, but also reinforced the capabilities of project management. That's why we hired Alvar. And Alvar has been following uh, the COSI project all through the in-licensing discussions. So he has, he has, uh, is well trained and well knowledgeable about the project. So he can hit the ground running now. And in addition, Alvar has worked previously with peptide projects, which is a benefit. I see. So there's a lot going on now, and I think we should end this discussion by looking forward. What can we expect from you in the nearest future? Well, I would state that Combina has never been in a more stronger position than we are right now. In CDO1, our epilepsy project, we, are, we have a partner with world-leading expertise and knowledge and know-how in that area. So they can take that project through the preclinical uh, um, phase, the clinical phase, and on to the commercialization. And COSI, the, the very exciting pain program, actually addresses a very significant and large problem for the healthcare system. So uh, with that, and they, both of those, both, both CDO1 and COSI, actually have huge markets. Most of my colleagues in gene therapy, they deal with projects which, and, and diseases which are very rare. But as I mentioned, this is, this is not a rare phenomenon. This is a huge market. So I think that we are well, uh, well faced to continue our uh, development of our project, thanks to the agreement with Spark. We are in a sound financial position, as mentioned in the, in the report. So we can do that in our own pace, and that is full speed ahead. I see. It will be interesting to follow your journey. And thank you so much for watching this interview. Now we have learned a bit more about CombiGene and their ongoing projects. And thank you, John, for coming. Thank you so much.